Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Real Clear Politics Takeaway for Thursday, July 22nd. I'm Tom Bevin, co founder and president of Real Clear Politics. I'm Carl Cannon, Washington Bureau Chief. How are you today, Tom? I am well, Carl. Carl, did you see uh, the big dust up on Capitol Hill yesterday between uh, Nancy Pelosi and Kevin McCarthy over her rejection of two of his selections to participate on the, the January 6th commission? Uh, reps Jim Jordan and Jim Banks were both Pelosi rejected them. She accepted three others, but rejected those two. And McCarthy subsequently pulled all of his GOP members from participation in that committee. They're going to boycott it. They're going to do their own investigation. Um, pretty remarkable, even by the standards of Washington these days, how poisonous it is up on Capitol Hill. But uh, this was this was quite the quite the showdown. Well, as I'm in my morning uh, newsletter, Tom, I couldn't resist it. To me, it seems like they're almost boasting about dysfunction now. The two the two dominant political parties in this country, you know, they can't they can't even agree to have a commission. They can't agree on the commissioners. They can't agree on the scope of the investigation. Um, you know, the the January six riots at the Capitol. Uh, the Democrats want to frame it uh, frame it as an insurrection attempt to take over the government. That should be part of the inquiry. Republicans are more inclined to call it a, a riot. It's run amok. Um, but, but and and to focus on, as as McCarthy and Banks said yesterday, why there wasn't more uh, security at the Capitol, given that they had been notified that something was going to happen. So they want to move the inquiry in their own direction. Well, and they they want to they want to they want to put the FBI on the hot seat. They want you know the FBI was warned about this and has infiltrated these these. Um, Right-wing populist groups. We know that from from the indictment in Michigan. There were there were certainly FBI agents in that crowd, and they want to know why. If they, I, I'm not saying in the Capitol, but in, in in they knew what the groups were up to. Why wasn't more? Why wasn't the Capitol Police warned in a better way? Why why weren't the DC Police warned in a better way? They also I also think if I'm listening to Jim Jordan correctly, he wants to, I think expand it to the lawlessness of some of the Black Lives Matter riots that occurred over the summer. And I think the Republican narrative is to try and create a framework where Democrats only care about demonstrations, uh, one one type of demonstrations, not another. To me, if you were really looking at this, you, you'd look at all these things, but the, there's no there's no any there's no expectation that anybody will play against type that like other commissions we've had in the past that anybody will say all right my side fault was, should be faulted here and not here and and you know have sober men and women of goodwill um, look at this and try and come up with something that will help the country no you know nobody sort of expects that it's considered this partisan exercise and it there kind of, doesn't appear to be much goodwill up on Capitol Hill these days Carl but what about the charge? that McCarthy made that Pelosi confirmed by rejecting these two nominees, which was an unprecedented move. As far as I can read and see, this had never been done before. She even acknowledged it when she, in her statement saying, you know, these are unprecedented times and an unprecedented action. They, they, you know, they require uh, this, this unprecedented step, Uh, you know, and for Republicans, that was confirmation that Pelosi was, you know, making this a partisan exercise. Does the speaker, um, should she have done this? Should she have basically told Republicans who they can and who they can't appoint to this committee? And should she have rejected? And doesn't that just, you know, give Republicans all the cover they need to say, you know what? She she's a partisan actor. She was trying to do this for partisan purposes. And, and we're not going to play ball. Well, yes. But from Nancy Pelosi's standpoint, she considers, you know, of these two guys, particularly Jim Jordan, uh, a, a you know rhetorical flamethrower and a, a person who operates sort of on the fringes of conspiracy theories and things. She she, I think her view is that his presence would turn that into a circus, and she doesn't want that. Now, you know I I don't Carl Carl hold well, on a second. Well, well, you asked me about what Pelosi's. I'm telling you what I think she's thinking, okay. and she's not okay. alone in that. And she got some support. Jill Lawrence, uh, a liberal columnist and editorial page editor at the USA Today wrote a column defending Pelosi. Um, Jill's a liberal, but very thoughtful person, a good reporter. And I, there's, you know, there's these people don't come into this commission with clean slates that, you know, they're, they've got things that they've said and done in the past. And clearly the Democrats um, don't, you know, they don't want Jim, they don't want Jim Jordan on the, on the commission. And that's, 
that's Pelosi's position. I think if she'd accepted those names, I think she would have gotten pushed back from her conference. Yeah, well, you're certainly right that people are coming to this commission with their past experiences and baggage, including Adam Schiff, who who notoriously you know lied and leaked for years about Trump and the Russia collusion story. He was absolutely you know you talk about how Republicans view him as a partisan flamethrower. I mean, should he be on the committee? I mean. Can't well, this, I, I got you know, Both I, sides can point at this. And so Na- for Nancy Pelosi to say, well, you know, our members are all patriots and we're putting country above, you know, party. But, you know, these two guys, for some reason, are are unacceptable because of the things that they've done in the past. And they're not willing to put, you know, country above party seems a bit rich to me, Carl. Well, I, you know, fall, um, um, Adam Schiff's already raising money off this. He, I got a I'm on an email list of his, and he got a solicitation for money based on this commission. So, yeah, I, but, you know, but again, Tom, we're talking, let's take a step back from this commission, which may not even happen now in any real way. McCarthy and Pelosi, both of them from California, ought to be able to sit behind closed doors and do some horse trading. And he ought to be able to say, uh, I, look, I can't add Adam Schiff on this committee. And she could say, well, you're not going to give me Jim Jordan, are you? And they should have been able to do this. That's what leaders do. That's what the word means. You, you have to lead your party. You have to compromise. You can't always be posturing in public. So I, I just, I, I, it's kind of a depressing day in Washington if the leaders of the two party from the same, same state can't come up with, you know, half a dozen names, a dozen names that they both agree on. That's what a bipartisan commission would be. Everybody going into that, would think, okay, I trust these. These are people of goodwill. Maybe there aren't that. Maybe there aren't a dozen people like that in Washington anymore, which would be even more depressing. So it looks like we're going to get a Democratic report and a Republican report, and they'll be spun, you know, in various ways. And but will we ever, will we ever get answers, Carl, to some of the questions that are out there regarding what happened? The, the questions that are coming from Democrats and from Republicans, right? About. Um, you know, what happened on that day? Are we ever going to truly know now, or is it just going to be partisan spin from one side or the other, and, and ultimately, you know, we won't be able to have a, a, a sort of truthful, objective reading of what, what happened that day? Well, you know, I don't mean to toot our own horn, but if you read Real Clear Politics or, or other, there's very few um, outlets out there that give both sides a story. I mean, the American people are going to have to come to their own decisions on this. I don't think uh, a, a congressional commission is going to be able to lead them through the hand. What, what people want, the big question is what people want to know are, did, did, was this really inspired by Donald Trump's rhetoric, not just on that day, um, but in the three weeks leading up to it, for the two months, like almost, you know, from November to January, the, this refusal to accept the election? Um, or was, uh, you know, was his, and it specifically was his rhetoric that day, we'll, we'll go to the Capitol, he told these people. Is that what started this? Or did it start earlier with their provocateurs? who've been planning this. Was it really a planned takeover the, uh, of the Capitol or a riot run amok? Um, that's what people want to know. And I think there's going to be journalism out there. There's going to be books about it. Uh, there'll be these two dueling commissions. And I think you put it all together, people are going to have to make up their own minds of what happened that day. I have a feeling a lot of people have already made up their own minds about what happened that day, Carl, and, and no report from Democrats or Republicans is going to change minds about what happened on that day. But we'll have to wait and see. That's what we do. All right, we'll leave it there. I'm Tom Bevin, co-founder and president of Real Clear Politics. And I'm Carl Cannon, and this has been the Real Clear Politics Takeaway for Thursday, July 22nd, 2021. Join us tomorrow, Friday, for our weekly audio-only podcast, which is um, longer. And we will have, in addition, uh, well, I will actually won't be here, but we'll have A.B. Stoddard and Phil Wegman, our White House correspondent. Till then, so long. Mm-hmm.